Every good plan cap project for Arduino, Raspberry Pi or any other microcontroller needs a soil moisture sensor. You probably already know that resistive sensors like this one are absolute crap. Everyone wants capacitive sensors, but be careful when ordering one of them. They all look pretty much the same, but I found out that 82% of them have major design flaws such that they won't work at all under certain conditions or their readings are very questionable. So be sure to watch this video until the end to not order the wrong product and save yourself some money and trouble. If you don't already have your own plan care project, you can check out Flora by following the link in the corner. Flora is a smart, self watering plant pot that can be built by anyone. It's completely open source and the instruction videos are being added to my YouTube channel step by step. It features a 3D printed housing with an integrated water tank, soil moisture and water level sensing, automatic watering, a rechargeable battery, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and a smartphone app to track sensor data and receive push notifications. Of course, Flora also uses a capacitive soil moisture sensor. There are already a bunch of videos on YouTube about soil moisture sensors that explain in detail how they work and why capacitive sensors are much better than resistive ones. Here's a quick recap of these videos. Resistive soil moisture sensors suck because they destroy themselves quickly after only a few days of operation. This is because a chemical reaction called electrolysis takes place when the sensor legs with their exposed copper paths are stuck into the ground and power is supplied to the sensor. As a result, the copper on the cathodic sensor leg is quickly dissolved while gases are being produced, as shown in Andreas Spies video at high speed. Capacitive soil moisture sensors do not have any copper exposed to water and they won't dissolve. Here's a brief explanation of their working principle. Two isolated copper paths on the sensor PCB form a capacitor. Its capacity is determined, among other things, by the amount of water in the surrounding area of the sensor. A timer chip is then used to create an electrical square wave that gets converted into an analog DC voltage by a bunch of other components. The exact output voltage depends on the capacity of the sensor and thus on the amount of water nearby. You can find thousands of different suppliers online for these cheap soil moisture sensors and their products all look the same at first glance. But if you take a closer look, there are actually quite huge differences that make some of these sensors completely unusable. I ordered a total of 38 sensors from different shops to run some tests and compare the product quality. Here's what I found out. Version 2.0 is by no means a technical upgrade from version 1.2. It is exactly the same product and nothing but a marketing trick. All of the products sold by online retailers can be traced back to around 5 different versions, likely sourced from just a handful of different factories in Asia. 82% of the sensors I have ordered have at least one flaw that prevents them from working correctly or even makes them unusable under certain conditions. I have found three common problems. Issue 1. Missing voltage regulator. In theory, these sensors could operate on a wide variety of voltages. But of course, the voltage at the analog output of the sensor also depends on the supply voltage. This is a problem if you are supplying the sensor with a non-constant voltage power source, like pretty much any type of battery. For example, if you are using a 3.7V lithium-iron battery, it will not output 3.7V when fully charged but rather 4.2 volts at room temperature. Then, as the battery drains over time, it will end up delivering only about 3 volts. This changing supply voltage would also confuse the output voltage of the sensor and thus the humidity readings. To solve this problem, many capacitive soil moisture sensors have a 662K voltage regulator on board, which regulates every supply voltage down to a constant 3.3 volts but some manufacturers have chosen to forego this regulator in order to save a few cents and have simply bridged the solder pads instead. 
This is fine if you can somehow supply the sensor with a constant voltage, but in any other case I would highly recommend to check the product pictures for the presence of the 662K voltage regulator. Issue 2. Wrong timer chip. As I explained earlier, every capacitive soil moisture sensor uses some sort of timer chip to create an electrical square wave. Unfortunately, not every type of timer chip used is suitable for operation on a 3.3V power supply, although this suitability is almost always mentioned in the product description. To find out which timer chip is on the circuit board, you can enlarge the product images and look at the label on the chip. Both the TLC555C and the TLC555I can be powered with a voltage down to 2, respectively 3 volts, making them compatible with almost every microcontroller. However, some manufacturers use older NE555 chips instead to save costs. The datasheet for this chip reveals that it has a minimum supply voltage of 4.5 volts. So these sensors will not work if powered for example by a 3.7 volt lithium iron battery or directly from a 3.3 volt ESP32. Among the 38 sensors that I ordered for testing purposes, there are also some with the unwanted NE555 which surprisingly do work on 3.3 volts. What these have in common is that they all have 20M written under the type labeling. It's quite possible that some samples work outside of the manufacturer's specifications, as they always allow for a certain buffer when writing the datasheets. But my few lucky finds may only have been a small batch and this will always be a game of chance. Issue 3. Missing resistor connection. Out of my 38 test samples, 53% had this issue, which is absolutely shocking and reveals a huge quality problem. It cannot be justified by the stinginess of the manufacturers, but only by stupidity. Here we can see the schematic of the capacitive soil moisture sensor as it's supposed to be. The outline part of the circuit is used to convert the waveform signal from the sensor into a constant voltage that can be read by other hardware. As you can see, there is a 1 mega ohm resistor that should be connected to the analog output on one side and to ground on the other. However, the check with the multimeter shows that this is not the case for the ground side. So with one side disconnected, it's like the resistor isn't there at all. How could this happen? To find out, I have removed the silk screen from a faulty and a good sensor to compare the copper paths. For the working sensor, the multimeter confirms the connection for the resistor to ground by this copper path. Also note the positioning of this wire hole between these two resistors. As we can see on the faulty sensor, the same wire hole is located a little further outside which interrupts the connection of the 1 mega ohm resistor to ground. Wow! It's so embarrassing how such a product is still produced and sold all over the world. In practice, this means that the sensor becomes extremely unresponsive and the measured value changes only very slowly as perfectly demonstrated in Stuart Cash's video. Here's what it's supposed to look like with a working sensor. Even though you might think you don't need a super responsive sensor, because you only measure every few hours, it's still a bad thing. You usually want to record several sensor readings at the same time and then let the software filter out any outliers and average the rest. If you try to take 5 readings with the faulty, unresponsive sensor, all 5 readings will be exactly the same. If the first one is an outlier, all following readings will result in the same wrong value and your measurement is garbage. Do you already have a capacitive soil moisture sensor? And does it have any of these issues too? Please let me know in the comment section. If you already have a sensor with a missing resistor connection, there are two possible ways to fix the problem yourself. Solder a new 1 mega ohm resistor directly between the analog out pin and the ground pin of the sensor. 
or solder a cable between the existing resistor and the ground pin of the connector. Finally, here is a short summary of how to identify a good capacitive soil moisture sensor without these problems before ordering. Just zoom in on the product images as much as possible and take a very close look. Check for the presence of the 662K voltage regulator, the TLC555C or TLC555I label on the timer chip and for the correct positioning of the wire hole. It should be located right between the two resistors and not somewhere at the side. If the image quality is too poor and you can't see things clearly, better play it safe and order from a different shop. Unfortunately, sometimes even high quality product pictures and the best product sourcing don't help. It has happened to me several times that retailers did not send me exactly the product as in the pictures, but a faulty one instead. A lot of people would probably never notice this and I think even most retailers are unaware of the tiny differences between these sensors. I hope these tips help you to find a suitable capacitive soil moisture sensor for your project. I did quite a lot of research and placed a lot of orders for this video, so please consider liking it to appreciate my work. My next video will explain how to solder the electrical components for my smart plant pot flora. So subscribe to this channel and hit the alarm bell to not miss that. Over here you can already find the video in which all other parts required for flower are explained and down here is another video from my channel for you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.